So this is the SAMS higher paper. It's the first paper we would have been given to look at. First question then is looking at the electrolysis of aluminium. It state which electrode aluminium is formed at. So right panic down the side. It's the positive anode, negative is cathode. Aluminium is positive, it gives you the information there, so it's going to go towards the cathode because it's attracted, positives and negatives are attracted to you. Overall symbol equation for what's happening, so you've got aluminium oxide makes aluminium plus oxygen. The hard bit then was balancing it, okay? That's a top swap drop to work out what aluminium oxide is. It tells you it's aluminium oxide, it's the idea of working out the chemical symbol. Explain how the extraction of aluminium may contribute to global warming. Uses electricity. Electricity requires fossil fuels, global warming. Another use is low density, so it's used in planes. You could have gone with cans. It's malleable, can be bent into shape. Um, bit of information here then. You had to use what was given to you. So mass of water was 100. 4.2 was constant. Temperature change of butanol was that times it all together and you should have got that value nice two marks for inputting values into an equation distance um two things that must be kept the same the surface area of the beaker distance of the spirit burner to the beaker two things that must be kept the same what was the similarity as the carbon chain increases the energy value increases um, experimental values were lower okay reason for that heat loss needed to insulate we spoke about this before it was only one mark but it you could add silver foil you could um, wrap it in cotton wool. Sorry, cotton wool. You could put a lid on it or a, a bung on it. Do it in a vacuum. Okay, so there's loads of different things you could do there to ensure that heat was not lost. Dectane contains 10 carbons. Give them a molecular form of dectane. So it's A-N-E. So you get your general formula. You have to learn the two general formulas. Just put it in. So carbon with 10, hydrogen 22 okay butene has two isomers draw the two isomers so one would have been the double bond of the first carbon the second would be the double bond of the second carbon okay explain what happens when they undergo polarization polarization is a lot easier than you think remove the double bond put it in the square bracket remember the n okay stretch it out so it can form loads of them polymers what is that remove double bond able to bond with other monomers to form polymers so this what would happen is another one would come along here and you join indefinitely to form polymers polymers is a fancy word for plastics fancy word for plastics really complicated graph going on here didn't photocopy very well to um look okay. but you hack then information um, work out what was going on. So determine which of paper and plastic has the greater percentage increase when recycling between 2000 and 2010. Show your workings. Okay, so it's a little bit messy here. Paper, these were the two values. Okay, you want to do change over the original values. So that was 43%. Exactly the same thing here then. Five and nine difference is four again change over original so it's percentage increase okay be really careful of that percentage increase okay so the answer would be plastic because there was an 80 percent compared to a 43 percent okay that's using a lot of numeracy skills okay calculate total number of unrecycled plastic bottles between 2004 and 2006 estimating a value for 2005 okay so you were given these values in terms of 2004 and 2006 and you had to estimate a value for 2005 using the graph add them all together okay and there was a bit of a range based on what value you used for 2005 okay what did you estimate from the graph um so 123 be careful that you got the times 10 to the minus sorry times 10 to the 9 okay that's weird. I've written that really weirdly there. Times 10 to the 9. Okay. Discuss why recycling plastic bottles does not save money. There's a large cost to the melting of them. Labor costs. You have to collect them. You have to sort them. Thinking about when they arrive at recycling plants. Okay. So there's a large um, cost in terms of workers to recycling plastics. Um, explain how you prefer a sample of dry copper sulfate crystals from sulfuric acid. Explain each stage. Nice question. Copper oxide added in excess. Ensure acid slash alkali are neutralized you'll see an excess formed 
Remove the excess solid by filtering. Leave the solution to evaporate to form crystals, removing the water. Okay. Balance symbol equation between your chosen. Okay, so it didn't say whether to use copper oxide or copper carbonate. That's up to you. I did copper oxide plus sulfuric acid. Gives me copper sulfate plus water. I then needed to write a balanced symbol equation. Okay, a balanced symbol equation. Working out what was going on. Bonding then in calcium chloride using a dot cross diagram. So you're looking at calcium being in group two. So it's a so it's a metal group two chloride non metal group seven. So that helps you find that outer shells. Calcium's got two to lose to go down to its next shell. Chlorine has got one to gain. So you needed two chlorines, each accepting one electron. So each one will be a negative because it's gained one electron, but you've got two of them. Be careful of that. Calcium has lost two, so it's two positive. Explain two properties of calcium chloride. So it's ionic. It's going to have a higher melting point because the strong electrostatic attraction between the positive and the negative. It forms a really strong bond, so high melting point. Conducts electricity when molten because the ions are free to move. Okay. Um, drawing the bond then in tetrachloromethane. Okay, it's a covalent bond. It would look like that. So here's the diagram showing what would happen um, in terms of temperature rise when you add sodium hydroxide to hydrochloric acid. And they've added a temperature sensor in to see what would happen. They've bubble wrapped it with an insulator, bits of information to pick up that. Okay. Um, if the experiment was repeated with 20 centimetres cubed of acid added at once, how would you expect the maximum temperature to be different? It would be higher than the 25, less time for heat to be lost to surroundings. If it was all added at once, there'd be less time for the heat to go out to surroundings. Sketch a graph, and you can see on the previous page I did sketch a graph. Expect if you repeated it with half the original concentration, so twice the volume is needed. Because of the larger volume needed the temperature would be slightly below 25 but on the whole the same amount of heat would be generated give the ionic equation that summarizes the reaction between acid and alkali so that's h plus ions coming from the acid oh minus coming from the alkali will form water remember your state symbols and your charges um, looking at this then the total energy needed to break the bonds in the reactants is this value here okay so this is a bit of a tougher question reactants products just to start us off calculate the energy needed to break the c double bond okay so they've given you all the energy needed to break this bond here okay they've given you all the energy needed to break all the bonds in there but we don't know this one so i'm going to label it up x okay but what we do know is that you've got four of that carbon hydrogen bond so cross them out and that added together equals that, okay? We've also got one bromine-bromine bond, which equals that. So if we add that all together, that's that, okay? So if we take that away from that, that will give you 1614, okay? The same thing then was asked of you on the product side, in that you know the whole thing is 251, and we want to work out what that bond is again, okay? This time, we've got four carbon-hydrogen bonds and two carbon bromine bonds okay um take it away and that would be three four seven okay then it says label activation energy is always between the reactants and the top of the hump okay overall energy change then is between the reactants and the products okay that again is a nice question just remembering the key facts about labeling an energy profile okay six marker then about raw um sorry about the blast furnace okay so there's four raw materials added coke limestone and iron go in the top hot air goes in the bottom okay i'll add the um kind of chemical equations as we go so coke boom bur uh, coke burns in hot air to produce carbon dioxide so the first thing that's gonna happen is the coke which is a source of carbon is gonna burn in the air and it's gonna produce carbon dioxide okay carbon then that carbon then goes on to react with the carbon dioxide to produce carbon monoxide okay and i've just balanced that out that carbon monoxide then works with the iron ore to reduce the iron ore okay because you want to make iron on its own okay so what you end up with 
okay? Even though that isn't balanced, is you end up with iron on its own and carbon dioxide again, okay? So the carbon monoxide has stolen that oxygen to make iron on its own, okay? That will then come out by here in a molten form, okay? So in a liquid form because it falls to the bottom and comes out by there, okay? Um, limestone, limestone then reacts with the impurities to form slag, okay, which then comes out just on top of the iron okay um certain air like the um sometimes you've got air like nitrogen and oxygen that can then be recycled to be reused okay again you've got access to this table of ions so don't overcomplicate it you've got access to this periodic table so don't overcomplicate things 